Greetings, friends. Chaos here. Today, I'm going to be giving you all some tips and tricks for making safer houses in Terraria without sacrificing overall aesthetics. Who says we can't have a safe home that also looks good? If you're enjoying built tip videos like this, be sure to subscribe and turn on bell notifications. And if you want to check out more tips, there's a link to that playlist at the end of the video. So the most important part of building a safe house is location. Not only does the biome that you pick matter, but where in the world that biome is located is also important. The safest biome to build in is pretty straightforward. It's the one that we spawn in, the forest. The enemy types here are very limited and the spawn rates are low. By comparison, the jungle has higher spawn rates and in Prehar mode, the underground desert has the highest spawn rate of any biome. The underworld might seem like an unsafe and daunting place to build in, and early on it would be, but later in the game, it is actually one of the safest places in the world. Town NPCs will happily move down there, and having a few of them will prevent the hellish enemies from spawning. As the world gets more dangerous, you become more powerful, but the underworld doesn't really change that much beyond a few new enemies after defeating the Wall of Flesh. Since it's underground, you won't have to worry about invasions or events either. So that early danger really leads to a safe late game if you choose to build there. But biome choice is only one small piece of the puzzle. Where in the world you build is going to be somewhat important as well, as the center of the world is going to be safer than the outer edges. If you build a forest towards the sides of the map, then you will occasionally get King Slime stopping by to say hi, even without a slime rain. You will also get Goblin Scouts, which can be especially annoying as they can open doors. In the center of the world, however, there aren't King Slimes or Goblin Scouts, and the sky is especially safe. Harpies and Wyverns will not spawn in the middle of the map, so technically speaking, a sky house just above the spawn point would be the safest location to build. But say you want to get a little bit more risky and you want to build somewhere else. I have some other tips to help increase your villagers' chances of survival. Before defeating the Wall of Flesh, there are only three big threats to your house. Blood Moons, Goblin Armies, and Bosses. A house cannot really be made safe against the boss as they just float through blocks and deal massive amounts of damage to your NPCs. It's straightforward, but the best way to keep your houses safe from boss fights is to build arenas away from your town and fight the bosses there. During a Blood Moon, zombies can open up your doors, letting themselves inside. There are two very easy ways to counter this, either lifting the entrance to your house slightly and leaving a small overhang so that zombies cannot reach the door, or just like in a real zombie invasion, you can just block the door. In Terraria, doors open away from the player or NPC that's trying to open them. This includes zombies. When they attempt to open a door, it can only move away from the zombie. By placing any piece of furniture or light source directly next to the door, the zombies will be completely unable to burst it open and get inside. And thanks to that automatic door opening mechanic introduced in 1.4, this really won't make life any more difficult for you. You just walk up to the door and it'll open naturally. It is by far the easiest way to zombie proof your house without making anything ugly. Goblin armies are a slightly different problem, however. They introduce two troublesome NPCs for your house. The sorcerer teleports around and fires projectiles that can travel through blocks. You won't be able to prevent them from getting inside the house, but their projectiles can be destroyed if you attack them, so they aren't too bad to deal with. The more annoying enemy in this evasion is actually the Goblin Peon. While any of the goblins besides the casters can open doors like zombies do, Goblin Peons take it a step further and actually break the door down. This means they can get into your house even if you have the door blocked off. Especially annoying is that if you don't realize this and you don't replace the doors that they've broken, your house will become invalid and unsuitable for town NPCs. Thankfully, there is a way of confusing their AI into not breaking the doors. This trick will also prevent zombies and goblins from opening your doors the normal way. And even better, this will work with tall gates so that you can use those to get in and out of the house without getting off your room mount. The way the door opening AI works for these enemies is they have to be standing on the ground right next to the door. The block 
right next to the door. But if the block closest to the door is removed, despite the fact that they are still standing next to the door, they will be confused and completely unable to open it. So if you simply dig two blocks or more down right next to the door, they can't open them. Even better, goblin peons are slightly smaller than the other goblins and zombies, and they'll actually fall into these small gaps. You can use this to your advantage by digging holes even further and creating a trap to deal with the peons for you. Once you've gained access to the mechanic and the painter, you can easily hide these holes with a clever use of actuated blocks and paints. In this example, I just used some white paint on some actuated stone accent slab to make it look like the slab next to it, and now this tall gate is saved, and you can barely tell that there's a hole there just by looking at it. After you defeat the wall of flesh, things change a little bit you'll begin seeing new threats appear. The goblin army now includes a new summoner enemy that is much tougher than the sorcerers. It can fly through blocks, it's very powerful, especially early hard mode. So for that reason alone, I would recommend taking the fight away from your town NPCs as much as possible, because there's no real way to make your house safe against them. There is a new enemy that shows up in hard mode that you can upgrade your base to deal with, however. The Wraith is one that will start showing up at nights and in blood moons. It can travel through blocks, so doors won't stop it, but it doesn't really fly. Instead, it kind of hovers, and it can only move upwards if it is inside of solid blocks. Because of this, you can wraith-proof your houses. All you need to do is lift them up a few blocks off the ground. It's pretty straightforward to do, but it can be ugly or bizarre to just have a floating house sitting in the air. Instead of doing that, you could try getting creative with the reason that the house is in the air. I'll give a few examples. You could simply put the house up on stilts, but be sure that you use background walls or actuated blocks so that the wraith cannot climb up the stilt legs. Or you can give the house a reason to be floating like propellers, thrusters, or in this case, a ton of balloons that are inspired by the movie Up. Another option is to give the house a look like it's not floating at all. You can use similar materials than the house is built with, but with actuators, walls, and various paints, and you can use teleporters to get in and out of the house, and you'll have a house that looks like it's built on the ground while giving you no solid blocks for the wraiths to climb up. You can also improve the safety of your house by building various types of traps. With basic wiring and pumps, you can design your base to deploy lava at the flip of a switch, or you can use timers to enable your base to fire darts, spears, spike balls, or even flames automatically, and use a simple lever to disable it when you no longer need them. You can get really creative with how the traps are used to help defend your house. Just remember to turn them off so that you don't become a victim to your own designs. And if you don't want the traps to be obvious, there are a few tricks that you can use to help hide them. A dart trap can actually shoot a dart through a solid block if that block happens to be right in front of the trap. This allows you to cover the trap slightly while still leaving it lethal. Or you could create a tunnel for the dart to travel through using actuated blocks and paints to try to hide that tunnel. Geysers will allow the flames to travel through 20 blocks before surfacing, meaning that you could easily hide geysers up to 20 blocks underground and still have fire pop out of the earth when you activate them. You can also design nice looking drones that carry traps and place these hovering above or around your base to deploy things like spike balls or boulders. With some ingenuity, your base can be as deadly as you want it to be without making it ugly. But you will eventually reach a point in Terraria where your house is simply no longer safe, be it bosses or invasion enemies that ignore all traps and blocks that you set up. They'll just enter your bases and destroy your NPCs. In these cases, if you want to keep all of your villagers safe, remember that the enemies are there for you. If you're not there, they'll despawn and they can't hurt any of your villagers. So all you really need to do is get away from your base. One interesting way to do that might be to use teleporters in your base to create a panic room. You can connect a teleporter in your base to a far off safe location where you can recover or even wait out some of the events like solar eclipses and blood moons. The best place to build this would be in the sky above spawn since there are no blocks nearby, nothing can spawn around your panic room, and you're in the middle of the world where harpies and wyverns aren't a threat. 
If wiring up teleporters over long distances isn't your thing, you can still accomplish the same effect by using pylons, which are obtainable early game. Just remember that you'll need to move three town NPCs or three pets or any combination of the two into your panic room so that the pylon can be used. Unless, of course, you have a universal pylon, but I don't see much use in a panic room by the time you're able to actually get a universal pylon. I kind of wish they were obtainable earlier than having to defeat everything. So hopefully these tips give you some ideas about how you can make your houses in Terraria a bit safer without having to sacrifice its appearance, and hopefully these different house designs give you some ideas for houses of your own. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and leave a like, and let me know in the comments if you have any more ideas for build tip videos. Before I go, I wanted to thank my biggest supporters for the month, Matt Dragon, Nate Wiley, Dragon Rider, Hippic3, Duke Samron, and Nick Peasley. And be sure to follow my channel artist, Mythical Water. Her channel is linked in the description below. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll catch you all later. Happy building.